What's up, everyone? Welcome into another one of our MLB DFS DraftKings Picks videos, this time for Friday, September 24th. I am your host, Justin Bales. We have a massive 15-game slate, uh, but this is probably the weirdest slate of maybe the entire season uh, for several reasons, and I mean, there's a ton to dive into. We're going to get through uh, my favorite pitcher stacks, uh, go position by position and everyone that I like. Prior to that, though, if you enjoy our content, please give us a thumbs up. Uh, mention anything that you want in the comments. I will always respond to questions about uh, players you like, home run calls, anything like that. Subscribe to the channel. You can turn on notifications by clicking the little bell. Also, we do have both of our NFL uh, videos up on our YouTube channel, so you can go there to find that NFL stuff if you want. All of our content is posted to the website. MLB content will be coming out today yet. NFL content is more or less all up. I will be updating my game theory article if you uh, play multiple sports. You can also get our core plays at dfskarma.com. Or if you just go in the description below, click the little show more, you'll find links to everything that you could possibly need. And you can get into our Discord for free, 100% free, uh, at chatdfs.com. There are obviously premium channels that come with the core plays package, um, along with for NFLs particularly. Our projections, those are still free for MLB. But... We can more or less dive into this slate because it's so weird. Um, no starter has been formally announced for Milwaukee. Uh, some places believe it'll be Corbin Burns. Just for the fact that he has a 12-4 price tag, that doesn't seem overly likely to me, but I don't necessarily know at this point. So today is a great day to get into our Discord, once again, completely free because stuff probably changes a little bit from uh, the time that I record this video. But at the top, at 11-3, we have Shane Bieber. The issue is his pitch count is about 75 pitches. I'm not paying over 11,000 for that. You have Garrett Cole, who has all the advanced metrics um, at 10-8. At 10-6, right below him, you have Frankie Montas, who has been throwing extremely well. Both get tough matchups. One is against Boston. The other is against Houston. Here's where this kind of gets weird, right? Garrett Cole, I feel like you can always play him, uh, but 10-8 against Boston is kind of questionable. Frankie Montas at 10-6 against Houston, you don't necessarily love it, but the temperature is supposed to be below 60 for that game. It's not good conditions for hitting. Montas, we know, is more or less an elite pitcher, and he's been throwing very well uh, over his last few starts. So it's tough to say that you want to play someone like Frankie Montas against Garrett Cole just because we know how good Cole is. But at the same time, I slightly lean Montas in this situation. And then at 10-2, you have Jack Flaherty. Um, he, he's coming back. He's Some places believe he's serving solely as an opener. Uh, for Kim to come in and relieve him in this game, I, I don't necessarily, even if Flaherty's throwing the entire game, I don't want to play him, I don't believe. Another reason for that is because the wind in Chicago is blowing out at roughly 20 miles an hour. Another reason to make this slate weird. One of the, the biggest reasons uh, for this slate being just super odd is the weather. You have, I guess I guess Montas, it's, it's supposed to be around 60 by game time. Um, you have below that, Nathan Eovaldi, I think he's completely fine uh, against New York. The upside's there. I'm not using him in cash. I think he's okay for tournaments. Jose Barrios against Minnesota. It's a revenge game, and the weather is supposed to be around 55. Uh, I feel like that's probably just where you're going. The other spot that you probably want to go is Dylan Cease, who at 9,000 is throwing very well and gets a matchup against Cleveland, who's been struggling, and it's arguably one of the best match i guess it's not arguably it is one of the best matchups it's arguably the best matchup on the entire slate um just in terms of team woba and strikeout rate combined over the last 14 days that's not the only options that can be used though um, this is where it kind of gets weird i'm now seeing that eric lauer could draw the start tonight if lauer starts you know i, I think he's relatively fine um you can give like 
max free to look at 9200 i just prefer barrios or dylan cease around that which if that's the case for most people max freed will probably go under owned uh, tyler mcgill i have no issues whatsoever if you want to go him sunny gray at 86 is a little bit too cheap i do like him Kyle Gibson at 79, Tony Gonsolin at 78, both 100% fine plays. But if you're spending down, I feel like it's pretty clear cut uh, that Logan Gilbert is the option. Specifically on DraftKings, on FanDuel, he's priced more appropriately. But 6,400 on DraftKings is pretty ridiculous, especially for a matchup against a struggling Angels team. Um, I believe that Gilbert probably gets quite a bit of ownership, especially uh, with a Coors game and San Francisco in Coors against Lambert. So 100% fine if you want to go that way. And then you have a few other guys that can also be considered who I don't love, but potentially matchup plays. Carlos uh, Hernandez gets a really, really good matchup at this point. Um, if you want to use someone like Jose Suarez, I'm more or less fine with it. Casey Mize doesn't really get the, the current form matchup, but I'm not overly concerned with Kansas City, so I do think that's relatively reasonable. Palo Espino, um, solid play at, at only 6,600. There's a lot uh, going on here. If you want to take a shot on like Ryan Yarball, assuming that he's playing the role as the long reliever, again, relatively fine in that type of a situation. It, it, it It's a lot. Um, I guess the easiest way for me to break this down is I'm probably focusing on Jose Barrios, Dylan Cease, and Logan Gilbert as my trio that... I, I want to put a heavy focus on. I think adding to that, you can have Garrett Cole, Frankie Montas, Sonny Gray sticks out a little bit. Even Kyle Gibson, I don't have any issues with. And if you really, really need to save money, uh, Carlos Hernandez is probably the one that I would more or less look to. I believe that's enough options at pitcher um, to give you a pretty big pool there you can comment any other pitchers that you're wondering about in the comments and i'll let you know what i think of them in terms of stacks it's pretty clear cut that, that if you can get to the san francisco giants uh, they get a matchup against peter lambert in colorado absolutely elite on top of that um the Los Angeles Dodgers will face off against uh, Humberto Castellanos in Arizona, so they get a little bump uh, for the hitter-friendly stadium there. Obviously, they get the matchup against the Arizona Diamondbacks bullpen as well. Those are the two major stacks that I feel like stand above the rest. If you want to add a third into that, it's going to be the Tampa Bay Rays. I think you try to get Dodgers and Giants into your lineup if possible. And that's why I think that a lot of people could end up on Logan Gilbert tonight. Um, for more GPP stacks, I feel like you can go back to the Phillies. I uh, played them last night. I've actually been playing them a ton recently, and they haven't been doing that well. But last night, I believe they scored 12. Uh, it was a really good, um, really good night with another top five finish for my core. So I would probably have, I, I guess I would have no problems going back to them against Pittsburgh tonight. If you want to take a shot on someone like Cincinnati, they've been cold, but uh, Palo Espino is by no means going to absolutely dominate anyone, so I have no issues with that. It's weird because I want to use Toronto against Bailey Ober, but I do really worry about the temperature in that game. It's just not good for hitting. And then you can take kind of some bolder shots, I guess I'll say. Um, Either side of Texas, Baltimore, they both get really good matchups. I, I'm fine stacking either side of that game. It's just neither offense is playing overly well right now. So you kind of put yourself in a weird spot. Um, I, I want to say like the Detroit Tigers I have no problems with because Carlos Hernandez isn't good. But at the same time, I don't trust Detroit. I feel like, I feel like you're probably narrowing your pool down in terms of stacks to the Phillies, the Reds, and then either side of the Rangers-Orioles game. Um, and then obviously you can take some some otter shots if you're playing a lot of lineups, but I don't really uh, need to go over them. If you have any questions on other stacks, again, comments I'll answer throughout the day. No issues at all with that. Uh, we can move here to position by position, but before we do, I want to quick shout out our partners, Jock Market. 
fantasy sports meets the stock market essentially you buy shares of players um, depending on how they do that night you will uh, get a certain payout so just for a quick overview if you pay five dollars for bryce harper um, just one share of bryce harper and he ends the slate as the top guy you will win 25 dollars on that five dollars if you buy three shares of bryce harper at five dollars each you pay fifteen dollars you win 75 dollars if that happens um, promo code karma gets you a free fifty dollars when you deposit 50 so Highly recommend downloading the app, checking it out. Uh, it's really fun, and we're giving out free advice all the time in the uh, Karma Discord, so DF, or chatdfs.com to get in on that as well. But moving along to position by position, if you can get to the top of catcher, you're choosing between Buster Posey, JT Rumuto, and Will Smith. All three get great matchups. All three are priced 4.8K or higher. Um, really tough at this point to pick the best one i think if i had to choose i probably actually go with jt Ramuto, followed by buster posey followed by will smith i don't think there's a wrong answer between the three of them though so 100 percent feel free uh, to use any of that trio if you want if you're looking more in the mid tier you can go with someone like omar narvez against tyler mcgill i don't have any issues with that um Mike Zunino, if you want upside, I generally use him against lefties, but it kind of is what it is. Elias Diaz, assuming he's starting at 3,800, or Tucker Barnhart at 36, both also make really good options. And then if you need to drop down even farther, 3,100, you have Pedro Severino, 29, Danny Jansen, and 26, Jose Trevino, assuming he's in the lineup against Alexander Wells. I like all three of those as cheap options. Moving to first base, this is going to be very obvious that there's going to be a lot of um, Giants and Dodgers on this. You can, at the top of the position, I've, I feel like I'm fine if you want to use like Black Guerrero Jr., if you want to use Joey Votto. They're in a tier below Brandon Belt and Max Muncy for me, though. I think between the two, I prefer Belt right now, um, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't be mad either way. Uh, at 4400 Ryan Mountcastle is a little too cheap. Um, I think he can basically be used in all leagues. I also don't have any real issues with Anthony Rizzo at 4100 I think that's also too cheap. I just don't love the matchup against Eovaldi because he's not actually that bad of a pitcher. Andy Abanez is a high upside option that I'm fine with at 4-4. I doubt many people use him with Mountcastle as the same price tag. Uh, a little below that, Brad Miller. I feel like he, he gets plenty of time against uh, Pittsburgh's bullpen, so Brad Miller makes an interesting option, assuming he's hitting fifth in that lineup. And then if you want to drop down a little bit more, uh, the most ridiculous price on arguably the entire slate would be CJ Crone at 3,400 against a left-handed pitcher in course. I think that Alex Wood is very good. I don't think it matters because CJ Crone is extremely good against uh, left-handed pitching and gets the benefit of course i initially also wanted to mention g man Choi and trey mancini but it just doesn't make too much sense to play them over cj crone and they're essentially the same price tag um Choi's 100 cheaper and mancini's 200 cheaper you'll easily be able to find that on this big of a slate so uh, cj crone if you're spending down it is just really the top option here Moving to second base, Tommy LaStella, terrible price tag. He'll be leading off for San Francisco at 3,900. You probably just plug him in and move on. If you don't want to use him and you want to get um, a little bit lower ownership of a guy, you can just drop down to the same game, Brandon Rogers at 3,700, uh, obviously against Alex Wood here. I think that's relatively fine. To be fair, I don't hate any of the top options at this price. Um, Trey Turner, Jonathan India, Brandon Lau, uh, Marcus Semien, they all make really good plays, but how are, it just doesn't make that much sense to play them over uh, Tommy Lostella under 4,000. It's, it's just a ridiculous price tag. Even like Gene Segura, uh, you can plug in there. And then another option off of Lostella, if you... Uh, you're just looking to get kind of different is Joey Wendell. I think that's a really good spot for him. Even Nick Solak, I know he hasn't been playing well, but also a good spot. 
and Colton Wong. I don't really want to attack Tyler McGill too much on this large of a slate, but Colton Wong at 3,800, especially leading off, is just a little bit too cheap. Um, moving to third base, and one thing that I guess I didn't mention earlier in the podcast, but the Chicago-St. Louis game is only seven innings. So the wind's blowing out of 20, which would be a huge bump to the bats, obviously, uh, but at the same time, only get seven innings, which is... Not nearly as good, so it kind of puts that game in another weird spot where you don't know uh, what exactly you want to do with it. Then you have Jack Flaherty coming back and and throwing early innings for St. Louis, so it's kind of just uh, adds to the weirdness of, of this slate overall. Looking at third base, again, if you're at the top, you're just using the, uh, the very obvious guys, Chris Bryant, uh, Justin Turner. Um, if you need to spend down a little bit more, you have Evan Longoria at only 3,800. He gets the matchup against Lambert in Colorado as well. Continuing on the trend, um, Eugenio Suarez at 42, DJ LeMayhew at 41. Both make very good options. Assuming he's in the lineup, Freddie Galvis is only 35. I do like him. And then if you need a bottom of the barrel guy, that's just going to open up a ton of salary for you. Jake Lamb is... Uh, min price on DraftKings 2000. He hits late in Toronto's lineup, but gets a plus matchup against Bailey Ober. Once again, I am concerned with the um, weather in this game. It's just going to be super cold, which isn't good for hitting. But that probably just moves me away from stacking. I don't think that you have to completely avoid the game if you don't want. And Jake Lamb is just a really cheap way to get upside uh, in the Toronto offense. At shortstop, I mean, very clearly, you can use um, Trevor Story. He's 4,300. I don't know what DraftKings was doing. He's elite at home against left-handed pitching. As I've said 100 times already, Alex Wood is very good, um, but it doesn't really matter that much. It's Trevor Story at home against a lefty. If you can get up to almost 6,000, Brandon Crawford, 100% fine. Corey Seager at 48 seems a bit underpriced as well. He should uh, probably have the 5K mark as his min there. And then depending on where he's hitting in the lineup, Kyle Farmer, I do like. I think that Isaiah Kinner-Falefa is 100% fine against Alexander Wells as well. Um, there's, a, there's a few other guys that you know can be considered here. Um, Willie Adamas at 34, price tag's just kind of stupid. Um, Nicky Lopez at 41, he's finally above the 4K threshold. But it, it's just really hard to get away from Trevor Story at 43. That price tag is so bad um, that you're probably just really looking to utilize him at this spot. And then dropping, or either or going up or dropping in tournaments if you don't want to eat the, the Trevor Story chalk. Outfield feels like it's pretty obvious. You can use the Colorado guys. You can use the San Francisco guys. You can use the uh, Los Angeles Dodgers guys. I think that Austin Meadows and Randy Arizarania are both way too cheap. Nelson Cruz is another Tampa Bay guy that can be used. I really like Cedric Mullins at 4200 That price tag is way too low. Um, Tavares for Texas at 3,800 against Alexander Wells. Assuming he's leading off, I like. I'm good with any of the three Phillies guys as well. Bryce Harper is 6,000, so tough to play him over someone like Mookie Betts, uh, who just gets a great matchup in Arizona's hitter-friendly stadium. But really, he's been playing so well that I don't have any major issues with it. And then if you want to one-off any of the Toronto guys, just so you're not dealing with an entire stack in that cold. I'm 100% fine with that. They all make really good options. I guess the last guy that I'll mention here, because I, I don't want to go over way too many guys for you, um, but Adalas Garcia against a lefty. I'm 100% fine with paying 4700 for him. If there's anyone else in the outfield that I didn't mention, because there's a ton more good plays um, that, I, that I just didn't talk about, Again, feel free to leave them in the comments or at any position. Uh, leave it in the comments, and I will get back to you 100% let you know. I guess the only thing that I should mention is the very obvious option is Garrett Hampson at 2,700. He gets the matchup against Alex Wood. He's expected to lead off tonight if that's the case. Um, just a pretty simple lock in my opinion. I feel like 
this is kind of a, a weird spot for, to, I, I guess, for a home run call. There are a few guys that I do really like. I, I think you can, like, you very clearly have uh, some of the, the Colorado and San Francisco guys that make a lot of sense. I will go with something a little less obvious here. Um, Tyler O'Neill against Zach Davies. I think I, I like that the the weather is blowing out at 20 miles an hour. I believe it's blowing out to left, so that should help right-handed batters. I think that Tyler O'Neill has plenty of power uh, against le- or a right-handed pitcher and Zach Davies. I have no issues at all with any of that. So my home run call will be Tyler O'Neill. That about wraps up the podcast for today. We will be back, I believe, likely on Tuesday with a pod because Monday is kind of like this weird off day where uh, I believe there's only two games. Um, So probably won't have a podcast for that, but should be back on Tuesday with another MLB podcast. Uh, Don't forget, you can find all of our stuff, free articles, uh, premium content, everything at DFSKarma.com. BetKarma.com is where you find everything you need for sports betting. Thank you for watching and good luck tonight, everyone.